Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. We've just concluded our ninth meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. I'd like to thank Ukrainian Minister of Defense Reznikov and his team for once again joining us today. Now, together we have made clear that we will support Ukraine's self-defense for the long haul. And we will move out with the urgency that the moment demands. Earlier this month, the United States announced another round of security assistance for Ukraine. The presidential drawdown announcement included more ammunition for HIMARS. It included 190 heavy, mach heavy machine guns to counter unmanned aerial systems from Russia or, or, or Iran, 181 MRAP vehicles, and more than 2,000 anti-tank munitions and other key capabilities. We also added $1.75 billion in Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative funds for critical air defense capabilities, including counter UAS, UAS systems and more. And at today's contact group, we joined again with our valued allies and partners to make sure that Ukraine has what it needs when it needs it. And we continue to work together to provide Ukraine with full combat credible capabilities and not just equipment. And that's why we discussed synchronizing our donations into an integrated training plan you can see the importance of our coordination and our common efforts to meet Ukraine's needs for armor. Among the members of this contact group, we have given Ukraine's defenders more than eight combat brigades. This includes major contributions from the United States, of Strikers and Bradleys and Abrams tanks. It includes the UK's donation of Challenger tanks and the contribution of Senator armed personnel, armored personnel carriers that Canada announced last month. It also includes the refurbished T-72 tanks that the United States, the Netherlands, and the Czech Republic are in the process of delivering, as well as Poland's latest donation of T-72s. And it includes the important steps from Germany, Poland, Canada, Portugal, Spain, Norway, Denmark, and the Netherlands on Leopard battle tanks. Now we also heard today about significant new air defense donations. That includes Italy and France, which jointly announced that they will provide Ukraine with a SAMP-T air defense system. And France also announced that it will work with Australia to ramp up 155 millimeter ammunition production to support Ukraine. And finally, let me also thank Norway, which just announced that it will provide 7.5 billion euros in military and civilian assistance to Ukraine over the coming five years. And that's a very significant commitment. Now, all of these capabilities will continue to be important for Ukraine's success on the battlefield. But as I said last month in Ramstein, this isn't about one single capability. It's about delivering all the capabilities that we promise. It's about integrating all of these systems together. It's about working with the Ukrainians to help them fight for their freedom. Now, we also had an important discussion today on our ongoing work on accountability. It's a priority for me and my contact group colleagues to ensure that our donations continue to be used as intended and that we move proactively to prevent arms proliferation. And we will keep working with our Ukrainian partners to ensure that all of the equipment that we're providing continues to reach the brave troops on the front lines. 